Well, and thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us as we focus on how to help you gain comfort and expertise and ultimately get more from your CRM, uh, which is Microsoft Dynamics 365. I'm Chad Collette with Forvis Business Technology Solutions, and we're excited to kick off our CRM for Oil and Gas User Group training webinar series for 2023. Um, I got just kind of a couple housekeeping points that I want to make. You know, we do have everyone in listen-only mode to provide the, the best audio quality for everyone. However, if you have any questions along the way, please enter those uh, in the question panel of your GoToWebinar so we can address those. And we definitely uh, encourage conversation and, and questions today if you have them uh, on our topic. Second, I want to let everybody know that we're uh, being this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be available after the live session. We will be sending an email out uh, tomorrow morning with the link for everybody to, to take a look at and to share with other users. So again, if you're not uh, familiar with Forvis Business Technology Solutions, uh, previously known for many, many years as Ledgeview Partners. Uh, we were acquired by uh, BKD, and then BKD merged with Dixon Hughes Goodman. So we went from, uh, you know, our little company in, in Wisconsin to uh, a gigantic nationwide company that we've got so many services across uh, assurance and tax and advisory. But, you know, we're the, we're the same, same company you guys have known and loved for the past uh, 15 years. And uh, Steve and I have been doing these webinars for uh, nearly 10 years together. So uh, great stuff. And we got a lot of great stuff to cover today. You know, CRM has got a lot of features and functionality. And the data that we enter every day is so important. But how do we get that data we need when we need it? You know, if you had a standard CRM out of the box, as they call it, you would need to create reports from scratch, which can be time consuming and also cumbersome. But lucky for all of you, your solution has a ton of reports ready to go at the push of a button, and, and you can enhance those reports to your specific needs. And who knows those reports better than anybody else? Well, our very own Steve Raybrock, who has been who has led our oil and gas team in every implementation for our clients. So even though I've seen this solution over and over again for the past 10 years and seen it evolve tremendously, you know, it's fun because I learn something every single time we do these user group webinars. And today we're going to focus on reports. Um, so much to look at, so much to do there. Steve, I'm going to turn it over to you to, to get us rolling. All right. Thanks a lot, Chad. I'll apologize in advance. I, I might go over today uh, on the time, so we will see. But this is such a great topic. I tried to cram as much in as I could in the time we had, but I want to make sure people leave here with a really good comfort level with, with uh, the reports because it's it's always interesting for me, some of the questions that we ask are, what are your biggest challenges with CRM? What is your favorite feature of CRM? And sometimes we get reports to answer both those questions. So I just wanna make sure running reports continues to be everybody's favorite feature and less of a challenge to run them. Um, so I am gonna take my time and go through a number of them and a lot of different things. So that's our, our main agenda item. But as always, with our user group webinar, I like to touch on a few things when we get done with the main topic. I'll talk a little bit about our, our roadmap. I'll review uh, questions or comments that came in. Uh, I'll give you the results of the survey and the, and the challenges that were referenced when you guys registered. And then I'll also reference uh, some of the other things that we do, other resources that you might want to tap into Forvis for. So with that in mind, let's get started and talk about some reports. So. I'm going to touch on this one slide and then get uh, move on from this slide and get right over into CRM and spend most of the time showing you how to run reports and then what the results of, of your selections would look like. So the most popular way and the way we're going to spend time today is using Dashboard 97. For, so for those of you who are still going into the workplace area and going into reports to run your reports, you can do that. Um, and some of them you might want to use use that feature for, but just because of the time constraint, because most folks are using this way to run reports now, this is this is what today's webinar is going to be about. Um, when you run reports in Dashboard 97, um, there's a, a ton of filters in there, and the one you typically would have to pick is is a time period. So what data do you care about? So you get to pick the data the report uses with these filters and this date range. And then the system will obviously take all that data and summarize it and produce the report that you asked for. Um, there's also a couple of really 
nice reports that I'm going to spend a lot of time showing you these. And there's a few reports that let you group the data. So you kind of decide how the data is going to be presented to you. So not what data, but how, basically how it's going to look when you get it. So for those of you who are uh, really good at Excel, you might think of it as a pivot table. So, and, and again, I'm, don't want to lose anybody with any buzzwords. I'm going to show you this. So you're going to see how I group the data when I select it. And then I'm going to pull up that report so you can see how it looks. And so you'll know if I pick this, this is how the report's going to look. Um, the reports um, get emailed to you in an Excel format. So it's kind of nice. You can just submit your request for your report. And a minute later, you know, your, your email beeps and you've got your report. So you can continue to work on CRM. You can submit five, six, seven, 10, 50 reports, you know, in a row and, you know, the emails will start flowing in. And then the, um, the other part is um, a feature that we added recently is you can schedule these reports. So if there's a couple reports you really like, and I know some of you are probably doing this already today, is like, hey, the, you know, the fifth or sixth of every month, I, I used to run this report. Well, now I, it just automatically shows up on my inbox because I scheduled it to run on the fifth of every month or every Monday morning or, or every day if you want. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature. I'll spend just a short time showing you that. Um, the hardest part that I hear folks, uh, that I hear from folks is knowing which report to run. So there's, there's a lot of reports maybe 15, 20, it's like, well, which report do I need to run? And the only thing I can say to that is you got to kind of look at the name of the reports and think about what you want. And you, you, you'll probably guess right, but if you guess wrong, look for another one. There's also some, some documentation um, that shows every single report and how it would look, or you could just run each one of them and, and, and see how they look. And then go, oh, this is the one that kind of you know, works for me, I'm gonna use this one. I would say some folks find one or two reports that they like, and then they just use them for everything, um, which is kind of cool because with these filters, you can kind of get whatever you want out of these reports. All right, the other thing I didn't even put on here, but probably the biggest thing with reports is understanding or knowing your data. If you don't know the data that's in the system, it doesn't matter how good you are at running reports, you don't know like what data is available to filter, to pick, to, to know. So keep that in mind if you're new and you just think I'm gonna go run some reports. If you, you haven't invested into learning all the stuff that's in CRM, what's in your account file, right? When you set up an account and you have owners and you have industries. Um, and you have some of the user defined fields and categories and diff all these different values that if you know them, then, hey, I want to run, run, run a report for this salesperson, this owner. Um, if you don't know that, running reports is going to be a, a challenge, but it's not going to be the root challenge, right? Your challenge is the data. So um, understanding the data is a big deal. All right. So with that being said, I'm gonna flip over to CRM and let's see if I can get there from here. All right, so hopefully you're all seeing CRM. So right now I'm in sales and I'm just happen to be looking at opportunities. I'm just in my little training uh, org. So what I'm gonna do is go down to the very bottom here and flip over from sales into the workplace area, which is how I access dashboards. So now I'm in dashboards and I mentioned this is all within dashboard 97. So these dashboards are in order by, by number here. So I'm just gonna scroll down until I find 97. So if you're new to this, sometimes this screen can be very intimidating, but once you kind of get a grasp on it, it's like, oh, I, I get it. So the first thing I wanna do is, is I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna pick a report. So I'm gonna pick, this uh, 13 month trending analysis report. So these are all the options I have, and I'm gonna go through um, many of these throughout the, the course of the next 45 minutes or so. So I'm just gonna start with this one. So I pick a report, and then I get this screen that, oh wow, what, what is this system asking me? Oh my goodness. So let's just kind of 
start at the top here and we're going to go through this to make sure you understand. I'm not going to cover every single one, but I think, I think I'll give you enough so you'll get a, a good understanding of how this ticks. So the first thing it's asking me for when I, when I run this trending report is, well, what do I want to trend? Do I want to trend gross profit, revenue, volume, or profit per unit? So to make things simple here, I think you guys all understand the concept of these values here. So I'm just going to do some trending for volume. Now here, I did want to touch on this right away to kind of get it off my list, but here's where you can schedule a report. So I'm not going to get into all the details on this. You can probably, it's pretty, pretty, uh, let's see, is it going to let me do it? Not just yet. I've got to, I've got to pick some other things here. So hold on just a second. I'm going to, I'm going to do scheduling reports a little bit later because it's my mouse is acting a little goofy right now. All right, so when I do this 13 month trending report, it's asking me for an end date. And basically what that is, is if I'm gonna do 13 months, what is the last month I wanna analyze? And then it's gonna go backwards 13 months. So I will just, just use, I could type or I could just use the calendar here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run this report. Basically it's gonna go from December, 2022, backwards 13 months. Now here's this group by. Um, um, and you can group, in this case, you can group by product, owner, account, department, product category, product segment. So if those don't mean a lot to you, right, that's a challenge. Right? So you have to understand the data that's in your system. I'm not going to cover, you know, all of that today, um, but just to know that those are some things that you're going to want to find out if you're not familiar with some of these terms. So we're going to, we're going to, use this group by quite a bit for some of the examples, but then I wanna scroll down a little bit further and just show you this section. So when I talk about the, the filtering or the data I want the report to use, it's given me a whole section here that's gonna use information from your account file. So think of this as your, your customers, correct? So what customers do I care about when I want to run this report? And if you don't pick any of these filters, it's going to grab data for all your customers. There'll be like no filters. But I can go down here to this owner. Hey, when I run this report, I only care about my customers. So I could pick, I could just check my name. So as soon as you check anything within a filter, it, it's boom, it's just narrow down the data. So imagine you have tons of accounts, you have tons of order history data. Now I've just kind of shrunk what the report's gonna use. If I uncheck it, now I'm back to getting all, all the salespeople. I'm not filtering on owner. I can do the same thing on industry. That's a very common one. If you, if you do any analysis on industry, maybe I just wanna run this report and I only care about my agriculture accounts or my, uh, my uh, automotive type accounts. So again, it's just a way to actually give you less data, right? To give you the data you care about. Some of these you will probably never filter on. There's just so many fields in the account file, you probably won't filter on relationship type, but you might. Um, credit rating, a lot of you don't use that, so that probably doesn't even apply. Um, over here on the right, you know, would you ever run a report to you know, only include accounts with certain payment terms? I mean, probably not, but it's there. Brand, I don't think anybody uses brand on the, uh, account record. I don't think anybody's went through the exercise to assign brands to all of their customers. So I'd probably never use that. And then there's categories and classifications. If, you're, if your company uses these, you can, can filter down the data based on these values. If you only want to analyze customers that started doing business with you, you know, on a certain date or before that date or after that date or based on when they last ordered, you can, you can apply that as well. We keep track of these dates on the account record. We just stamp it on there. And then there's some user-defined fields. There's six of them. If your company's not using these, your screen's gonna look a lot like mine. It looks like we just have some, some stuff set up for, for user code one, just for testing purposes. So this is a way for me to filter the data out on the, like which accounts do I want? Right? And if I, if I don't do anything here, I'm going to get all of them. And then the one that's a little bit trickier is order history. So every transaction, every time they buy something from you, and uh, an order history record comes over from your accounting system. And every one of those order history records has 
a product on it. It has a department on it. It has a product category on it. It has a product segment on it. So now, again, if you know your data, maybe you want to run a report and you only care about, let's say, your lubricants department. Well, boom, I've just gotten rid of all the other order history transactions that I don't care about. Again, if I uncheck it, I'm going to get all. If you're using product categories, you know, a lot of you are using product categories. You can select, filter on those, filter on product segments. Um, unique ID, you probably would, not too many people would use that. I'm not going to spend any time really talking about that. Every single record is stamped with a very specific unique ID. So again, that would be very an, an exception if you'd ever have to tap into that. And this report type, this gets a little bit deep. I'm going to show you all the options right now so I can kind of get this off the list. But when we process your order history at night, when it comes over from your accounting system, we, we do a lot of analysis and we try to determine if this transaction is for a, a new account, if this is a transaction that we would consider share of wallet business, or if it's just, just normal business. So it won't be stamped with either of these. So then you can run reports and you can say, look, I want. I want all transactions, or I just want share a wallet, or I just want new, or I only want share a wallet plus new, or I want to take all my business but subtract out share a wallet and new. And a lot of people would call that, I'm analyzing my retained business. So customers who've been around a while, um, how are they doing? So it would analyze that data. A lot of folks don't even know about this option and they just, they just leave it, it says all. <clears throat> okay, so a lot of that, was covered. I wanted to kind of give you the high level, and now I'm just going to kind of roll up my sleeves, and we're just going to we're going to do some reports, <clears throat> and we're going to you're going to see this kind of in action. So I'm going to use this report 200 because I'm here already, and I'm going to do it by volume, and I'm going to pick this 12, uh, 31, 2022, 20, and I'm going to group the report by product just like this. And now what I would do is I would go down to the very bottom. That's what I want. I'm just going to request this report. Now, I'm not going to wait for my email to come in. What I'm going to do is I ran this earlier. I'm just going to open that report up. This is the email. I got an email and it had this report on it. So it's just opening the, the spreadsheet right now. I'm just going to slide it over here so you guys can all see it. So I asked for a 13-month trending analysis report by volume. And I told it to group it by product. And I said, I want the end date to be 12-31-2022. So because I told it to group it by product, I'm going to get one line for every single product that we sold over the last, these 13 months. And then it just gives me the volume. How many did I sell to every customer in every industry for every salesperson, right? I didn't filter on anything else. So here's how much I sold of this particular product month over month for the last 13 months and then a total for those 13 months. So a, a pretty simple report can tell you something if you if you care, right? This is great. It's pretty could be a big report if you have thousands of products. Um, I'll just scry just this is my little demo world, so not a ton of stuff in here. And you can see I didn't load a lot of data into a few months, but there it is. And then there's totals for each month. It's like mine got a little bit big, so I've got to move the column out a little bit wider. So so there's the first report. I'm going to close out of that. Now, I'm back. I'm just uh, back to CRM. And now, just to give you another example, I could say, look, I want to run this. I like this report, right? But I just want to see the report, the, the, uh, the products that I sold to my customers. So I just had to pick my name here. And then again, I would go down to the bottom and I would request that report. And when that one comes in, it looks almost the same because the only thing I did was tell it I want less data. So it's the 13 month trending report by volume, by, by group, by product, here's the date. But these numbers on the report are only going to reflect the numbers of gallons for each product sold by Steve's account. So this is a great way just to say, hey, how am I doing? Right, or you could maybe you. I could have picked like five, six, or seven salespeople. So I'm going to close out of that and just show you like a couple more here now. So I'm going to see. I think I'll uncheck Steve. Maybe that report is so long and includes products from all kinds of different departments. I just want to see 
my lubricant, you know, how I'm selling for my lubricants. So run that report. How does that one look? Same exact looking report, right? It's got products listed on the left. It's got a bunch of numbers in the middle, but these numbers are only for the products that we sold out of our lubricants department. And I could have picked fuel and it may, maybe you don't have very many fuel products, so it could be a very short report. So sales out of your lubricants department by month showing each product. So that's how that works. I can get even more, uh, I can I cannot filter on, on these accounts at all, like I didn't before, but instead of doing lubricants, maybe I just want, we'll just pick uh, my antifreeze. I run that report. You guys are starting to get the gist here, I hope. Um, I'm picking the data, the report's gonna look pretty much the same, but look, these are, these names might not make sense, but these are what I have coded in my little demo world as antifreeze products. There's not very many of them, so here's how much antifreeze I sold, you know, by product, month over month. You you can also get a lot of the information I'm about to show you in this example um, right on on the account screen. But I could, if I wanted to, just see how a particular customer is doing. Um, there's a way here to put in like an account number. So I'll just put in one. I could go to run that report, and that report's going to look just like this. It's going to look like very similar, right? It's going to list a bunch of products with a bunch of numbers. But what is my filter here? I'm only looking at data for account number 567333. So whoever that is, that's that's my Fairview Manufacturing. So there I go. I can see how this account is trending. Now, again, we do have a lot of dashboards and charts like this that are right on the account form. So I don't know if this would actually apply, but just to see what these filters do. I just wanted to kind of show you some of the things that these filters do and what you can do. So you pick the data, the report kind of is the report. All right, so moving on a little bit to this group by. So I'm gonna change this group by to be by account. And I go to run that report, right? Remember how to run it, go down to the bottom, request report. A little while later, my email goes off and I have a report that looks just like this. So I'm going to get a bunch of numbers in here, but these numbers are not a reflection of products anymore. I wanted to group the data by account. So now I'm getting a list of accounts. So how did this account do month over month? How did this account do month over month? Um, and, and think about it. I could I could go back here. And I can say, wait a minute, that report's way too long. I really only needed my accounts. So now I, I go and I request that one, and the email comes in, and the report's going to be just slightly shorter. It's only listing the accounts where Steve is the owner, right? So how did how did my accounts do month over month? So I'm not really analyzing products anymore. I'm analyzing accounts with, with the same report. Um, if I cared about how my accounts are doing, but just for lubes, you know, I've got a kind of a combination of things here. I said, I only want lubes, I only want my accounts, and I want to group it by account. So I go request that one. Pretty much you're going to get kind of sick of me showing you this report, but it's the same looking report, right? The same columns, but the data in here are for just Steve's accounts. And these numbers are only the lubricants gallons that were sold to Steve's accounts. Right. One more example on this, and then we'll um, then we'll move on to a different report because I just want to set the foundation here on how important this group by and these filters are. So just one last one, um, and there's a lot of options on here for this group by, but I'll just show you just how simple it is if I group this by owner. So then I probably wouldn't filter by owner and even need to, I guess I'll leave it for lubricants. So I'm going to run this report and I want to group it by owner, but I only want to see lubricants data. So I request that report. Right? Wheel spins, I get an email in a minute. I open up the email, it has this document on it. I open up the spreadsheet and a very short report, right? Basically, how's the sales team doing for lubricants month over month? Well, here's Lisa, 
how many lubricant gallons, because I picked volume, did Lisa sell month over month for the last 13 months? How many lubricant gallons, you know, did Steve sell? So you can see this one report, the possibilities are almost endless. There's probably like this one report could get you a thousand, tens of thousands different answers, depending on what's important to you. What, what do you want to analyze? All right. So now I'm going to move to another report that has a, a number of group buys. And it's one of my favorite reports when I come to like analyzing the data. Make sure I don't have any filters on here. I'll turn this one off because it does remember the checks that I made. So I'm going to go to this report 170, which is a very simple sales summary report. Um, this one's going to ask me for a range of dates. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to type this time. I'm going to put in 1, 1, 20, 20, oops, I can't type, 20, 22 through 12, 31, 2022. So I just happen to pick, you know, a full year. You can pick any, pretty much any time period you want. I'm not going to pick any filters. So I'm going to, I want to, I'm going to scrunch all the data for a whole year. But now here's where, and you'll see how this report looks. It's not going to have that 13 month trending it's a different report but here's where i've got multiple tiers of grouping so i'm going to say just for demonstration purposes i'm going to run this report and my my highest level is going to be department and then within that product category and then within that product segment and i go down to the bottom and i request report and this email shows up with this spreadsheet in it so there's not a ton of columns on this, this report. It's showing me volume, revenue, and gross profit and profit per unit <clears throat> by department, product category, and product segment. So most of you might understand the lubricants a little bit better. So I'm just going to slide down here. So here is my lubricants totals for the whole year of 2020, so 2022. So how many gallons did I sell? How much revenue did I produce? How much gross profit did we make? And how much how much did we make per unit? And again, don't make fun of the numbers, it's all just test data. And then within that number, right, how did we do by product category? And these are my three product categories. So I see those numbers. And then I said, break it down one level deeper by product segment. So these are my product segment numbers. Now just imagine, this is for like, the, if I have access to the whole organization's data, this is everybody, right? Well. Maybe I like that report. I like the way that looks. I like the way I can group things. Well, what if I went in and I said, look, I only want this for my accounts. And I'm gonna run that report. Again, the report looks very much the same. I didn't change the groupings at all. I get a report, looks almost exactly the same, but the data is only showing numbers for all of the accounts that Steve is the owner of. So this is basically how did how did I do for lubricants? How did my customers do for lubricants, Chevron, other private label, what have you? So now just to give you a little bit more sense of kind of the group buy, I'm gonna close out of this and I'll uh, I'll uncheck this and I'll say, well, look, you know, I'm doing some analysis, but I want to do the analysis. I like that report, but I want to group the report by owner and maybe industry. And this third segment, this third grouping, I don't, I don't even need any. So, but I only want to analyze my lubricants. Okay. When I go to run that report, it's going to look slightly different because I changed the group by. So I told it to group it by owner, which is salesperson, you know, and then within that industry. So if you look at mine, you know, here's my total numbers. Oh, and I'm only looking at lubricant numbers. So how did Steve do? For lubricants and then looking at Steve's accounts the industries where is what industries are we selling most of our lubricants to at least Steve is selling to <clears throat> so you pick how you want this little I'll call it a pivot table but this this spreadsheet to look based on how you group it just to give you one more real quick example I'm we're gonna kind of get out of group buys here in just a minute I'm gonna turn off all my filtering and I'll just show you one more group by. I could group by owner <clears throat> and then maybe department and segment. So I go to run that. 
<clears throat> what does that one look like? It should look hopefully just like I picked here. So I didn't filter on pretty much anything. I'm looking at all of 2022, but I'm getting a report that's by salesperson with their numbers. And then how did they do? Well, I, let's pick mine because it has a little bit more data. So here's how this salesperson is doing. And then for each department, how did Steve do for um, you know across the board? And then within the department, how did how did Steve's accounts do? So so far I've showed you two reports, right? But the possibilities are are really endless. Um, so that's just two reports. Um, I do want to cover some more reports. Um, so I'm going to do a couple, um, and then the rest I'm probably just going to I'm going to kind of speed things up here a little bit. Hey, Steve. What? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what, one question kind of came in real quick is, is there a way to clear filters with just one click? Yeah, so maybe it's two clicks because you'd have to you'd have to go somewhere else in CRM, like go to activities or go to reports and then come back to dashboards. But that's a couple clicks. So if that as you guys are all starting to use this, that that gets to be just like a royal pain in the butt, um, just let me know and I'll put that on the enhancement list. Maybe we can add a button up here that says like clear all, but it's just a couple of clicks to get back, you know, to get out, go back in and it and it, then it forgot everything. So thank you for uh, for interrupting me and uh, yeah, if there are any other questions come in, just holler. All right, so I'm gonna move on because people are not only interested in how to run reports, but what are some of the other reports that are available? And um, so I, hopefully you're pretty good now at 170 and 200. Um, but another report that's kind of uh, popular is, is, and if you look at the name of it, it, it kind of makes sense what it, you're gonna get, but this report 100 is an account ranking report. So if you can think, it's gonna rank your customers best to worst. So it's gonna ask me, how do I wanna rank them? By volume, gross profit, revenue, profit per unit. I'll just leave it volume. It's asking for a range of dates. I've got that filled in already. You guys all understand the filtering. So if I only wanna rank my accounts or the industrial, you know, the agriculture accounts, or I only wanna look at the business for lubricants, you know, I'm not gonna filter on any of them. I go to request that report and what do I get? I get a report that looks just like this doesn't look anything like the other reports because it's a different report. It's an account ranking report by volume for this time period with no other filters. So basically, what am I getting? I'm getting a list of accounts. So this is all information about your accounts, right? Your industry, address, main phone number, who the owner is, when they started doing business with you, when their last order date was, but this is the key right here. How much volume did each of these customers bring in in 2022? And show me the customer who brought in the most volume to the least volume. The other thing that's kind of cool is we have a running subtotal here. We have the percent that they contributed of the total, and then we have a running percent. And that's gonna make a little bit more sense when I show you the next, the next version of this. Because I can tell right away that I should have filtered on this a little bit because we do, fuel, we do lubricants, we do other stuff, and the fuel numbers are totally skewed in this report. I don't want fuel. I want to run this report and I only want lubricants. So I, I still want this range of dates, everything's good, I want all sales people, but down here, I only want lubricants. I go to request that, lo and behold, a minute later I get an email, and now this is going to make a little bit more sense. List of customers, ranked volume, highest to lowest. And here's how much percent of, of the lubricant volume, like this top customer brings in about 25% of your volume. Um, what a lot of people have asked me is, look, I want a report that shows me like the top 80%. Well, 80% of your volume, because we have this running percent, it's like a running subtotal basically, 80% of your lubricants volume last year came from these accounts. So it's just a, a great way to get a big picture of that. If you're worried, you know, if you want to focus on maybe your top accounts next year, you got a big program you're gonna, you know, do. You, you maybe you don't want to spend it on all of these other accounts because there's probably going to be hundreds, if not thousands, that make up the last 20%, right? So have at her. 
Okay, a few other reports that I want to touch on today, um, and I'm going to show you just a, a couple examples, and then the rest I'm just going to discuss. I'm not going to show you because I think you you kind of got the concept here. So just one more that I want to show you, um, and I'm going to uncheck this just to make sure. Um, and I'm going to pick report 115 because you're going to notice a lot of these reports are going to have this terminology in it. Um, 115 is a is a account period comparison report. So what do I think that is? It's probably going to list accounts, and it's going to do some comparisons for me. So it's going to basically give me a list of accounts and compare two time periods. So I can see if if volume is going up or down, or if gross profit is going up or down. You know, I get to pick. Some of these other reports on here get a little bit more granular. Like report 205 is an account product variance report. So this is gonna this is gonna be a really long report, right? For every single account that you filter on, for every product that they buy, you know, show me show me that data. So, so there's gonna be a lot, right? Each account, if each account buys five, six, seven, ten products, that's that's ten lines for your thousand customers. That's a ten thousand line report. Um, but if you want the analysis down to the uh, account product level, it's right here. The report that I'm touching on is uh, the one that's just at the account level, account period comparison. I'm going to leave it volume. Here's where I could go in and I could say, well, I want to look at like a couple years ago, so all of 2021. And if I could type. So my prior period, 1 1 2021 to 12 31 2021. And I'm going to compare that to 1 1 2022, And now don't forget, you have all of these filters. So I could say um, I want to do it by volume, and I really only do want to compare my lubricants business. But remember, you could say I only want my accounts, I only want my agriculture accounts. Um, I only want accounts with this payment term, right? That would be kind of weird. Um, maybe you want to analyze how a certain product segment did or a certain category did, right? You, you pick the data, and then when you get that report, it's going to look just like this. Very similar to what I just showed you um, uh, for a ranking report with account data, right? It's going to list accounts, but it's not. It's not like best to least or anything like that. It's just a list of accounts. We actually sort them by current period, who bought the most in the current period. But so that's 2022, here's 2021. And then how much volume, because I picked volume, did, did this account go up or down for their lubricants volume? So I picked it, I filtered on the department, but these are my accounts, these are Sean's accounts, these are like everybody's accounts. Now the report, was originally designed kind of just just end up right here that was the report and then people started asking they wanted to even take a deeper dive into this like well how did you get this number this current period so what we did is we show you by month then the numbers with we, we only show you up to 12 so i picked a 12 month time period twice which is great so there's like like 24 more columns over here uh, and then we also had some people who exported this and wanted to do some stuff, some more analysis. So we added just some other account data on the end of this report, start date, last order date, anything that we thought you might be interested in. It doesn't hurt to have it out there. It's just a spreadsheet. So there it is. But really, this was the intent. The rest of this is all like, you know, if you care, you have that information right in front of you. So I really like this report. Again, you can do it a number of different ways. Um, I'm just going to touch on a few other ones. I'm not going to actually run them because I think you're kind of getting the concept. You can play with these. You can't really break anything. Um, what's another kind of popular report? Um, so 100B and, and, and 115B do the same thing I just showed you, but many of you um, have your CRM set up where you have parent accounts and what I call child, you might call them ship to accounts, and they're all combined, right? They're linked together. So the reports I showed you would have listed those accounts separately. But if you run this ranking report, the 110, uh, the 100B, 
it will combine the parent and all the child accounts and give you one line and then rank it that way. And when you do this account uh, period comparison report, the 115B will combine the parent, all the child accounts, and then do that comparison for you. Just giving you one line for the overall customer. So those are pretty pretty popular. I kind of touched on 205 before. This is going to get down to the account product level. Um, some people try to play around with that report in Excel, and it's formatted where it's a little bit dicey to play with in Excel. So we made another version that's very easy for you to massage the data, add filters, do whatever you want once you get it into Excel. So it's basically the same report. One's a little bit easier to massage in Excel. If you want to do some analysis at the account product segment level, here's another report for you, a couple. Again, one that's a little bit easier to, to manage. Um, 215 is kind of cool. This is maybe a report you would run if you want to look for some, maybe some share wallet possibilities. Because it's an account report, but it's an account product segment analysis report. So this report, you pick two, three, four, five, six product, uh, I'm sorry, product segments, and it will run a report listing every customer and how much they purchased of each product segment. And you might go, geez, they're buying a lot of this segment. Maybe they're buying a lot of my coolant. Why aren't they buying grease for me? Normally, folks who buy coolant, you know, buy grease or whatever, right? So you pick the segments, uh, we'll line them up for you, give you the data and, and have at her. Um, 230 is also kind of cool. Um, that's, a, that's a report, it's very difficult to do this with some type of uh, advanced find or filtering, but this is a way for you to get a report of the last time somebody bought something and what they paid for it. So you could say, analyze all my 2022 data, uh, or maybe you go from 20, January 1st, 2022 through today and show me the last time each product was purchased by each account. And maybe that date, maybe that price will trigger something for you. You get a ton of data, but again, it's in Excel, then you can just have at her. So there's a few other reports on here. Again, I'm not gonna have time to touch on all of them. I'm kind of gonna be going over already, like I said, but one other one I do wanna show you, and that's this existing, I'm sorry, um, this salesperson growth report, just to get a sense for another, the way another report might look. So I'm analyzing salespeople, but I'm analyzing their growth. So I said, look at 2021, 2022. I didn't filter on anything, but you get the drill, right? I could filter on any of this stuff. I wanted to narrow the numbers down. Um, so maybe I want to analyze how the salespeople are doing year over year for a certain industry or for a certain department. But I think I just ran this for everybody. And it's a very short report, um, but it scrunched the numbers for me. And it's showing me by salesperson, gross profit, 2021, 2022, growth, growth percent, volume, prior period, current period, and then, and then profit per unit, prior period versus current period. So again, if you like this report, if this tells you what you want, um, you could use report 350. All right. I'm afraid I'm going to have to get back to the PowerPoint and wrap this thing up because I think I'm a little over. Chad, any other questions as I'm trying to slide over back to PowerPoint? Nope, nope. You're 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 good. You're doing fine on time too. It's not. You're you're good. Okay. Good. 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 All right. So if anybody has any follow-up questions, the the fact that reports were, you know, the best feature, but the most challenging feature. I hope I've addressed some of the challenges you're having. But if you're still having challenges, you know. You might want to talk to another power user there. If it's, if it's data related, maybe you talk to somebody who's been around a little bit longer, or you can always reach out to me or our support desk. And we, we, like Chad said in the beginning, we want to make this tool as valuable to you as possible. So a couple other things, I'll kind of do this quick because I know we're late, but Chad said I'm okay. Um, the roadmap, uh, we're going to focus on, on more of the smaller ideas, these little efficiency gainers that have been coming in. People will say, you know, can you create this report? Can you add this? Uh, you know, add this field to this screen, you know, can you make this view? Just just those little things that are gonna make you just a little bit more efficient each day. Um, I haven't seen anything come in and we don't have anything on our roadmap of a big new feature, right? I've actually been told, Steve, you've rolled out so many features, KPIs, uh, gap to goal analysis, goal setting, you know, on and on that, that we still aren't using. So, you know, you don't have to add anything else. 
Um, but if you have ideas, keep them coming. That's that's what I'm here for. So uh, just submit your ideas to me. Um, there were really no questions submitted, but there was one comment. I didn't know if it was a question or not, but it just I, I, this is exactly what it said. It said the iPad would be a good platform for road warriors. And I couldn't agree more. And some of you are probably doing that. You know, as long as your iPad has a, an internet connection, just have at her. You can use CRM, you know, out in, out in the real world. You can use the app. Uh, there's an app you can download for your phone or your iPad. So have at her. I couldn't agree more. Um, if you do have any other questions, um, I just want to make sure you're aware. You know, you can always reach out if you have a power user for your company or your manager or uh, otherwise, we have our support team. Here's how they can be reached. Um, please don't wait for this meeting to, uh, you know, to ask a question if you have it. That's we're here to help. <clears throat> All right, biggest challenges. Um, this is like a first. I'm so proud of everyone. But for the first time ever, the top biggest challenge was none. And I hope, you know, this is only as accurate as the the folks who signed up for this. But uh, it's a good thing. This is like fantastic. And then uh, the second biggest challenge was reports. And so I'm hoping today I actually help with that. Usually we get uh, adoption and time are like our biggest challenges. I don't know if people are sick of saying that or if uh, things are starting to slowly get better out there. Um, but this is down considerably from the last time we took this survey. So it's great to hear. Um, you know, a lot of people are, are new who, who are showing up here, so they're new. You know, they'd like to get trained. Let's let's get them trained, folks. So if uh, within your organization, if you can help out the new folks who need training, let's do that. Uh, if it's too much, you don't have the time. I, you know, we offer that service. I do training for clients all the time. So just let me know. There is a there is a cost for that, um, but I'm in. I mean, I I enjoy doing that. I want I want people to you know, re really be able to take advantage of all the features in the system. And then navigation was uh, was also on the list a little bit a, a few times, so I, I listed that. Not not a super big deal, but that's still there. And then there were a lot of other challenges that were listed once. I couldn't kind of put them in a bucket. And some of those were actually just like like a question almost that could have been answered by the support team. So please, if you have questions, right? I don't know how to do this, or I uh, you know I'm trying to run this report and I'm not getting the results I want. I mean, call our support team. Email our support team. Send them an example of what you're trying to get, and we're here to help. Um, what is your comfort level within CRM? I thought this was kind of nice. Things haven't changed too much, but uh, still, I would say it looks like 39% are a little bit behind. You know, 9% really need some training. Let's, again, let's get them trained. That's down a little bit. 30% um, are kind of okay, just getting by. I'm guessing. Oops, looks like I missed a letter here. Um, Looks like they could use a little bit more training. Hopefully today helped. Um, but 45, 50, was that about 61? So uh, feel pretty good or feel fantastic. So I love it. Uh, so the comfort level is a little better the next time. Let's just continue to get folks trained. Again, I'm here to help if you need it. Um, these are some of the other resources. Chad kind of touched on this a little bit in the beginning, how big Forvis is, kind of their accounting side. This is more on the technology side, but we do. ERP consulting now. So if you're having troubles with your, you know, your your accounting or your ERP system and you're thinking about switching, you already have a relationship with with four of us, with us. Maybe you want to just reach out and say, hey, what can you guys do to help? You know, our our ERP is, you know, not being upgraded anymore. We need something new. What should we do? We also help a lot of uh, companies with marketing, whether that's consulting, whether we actually do their marketing for them, they outsource that, we help them with automation tools, we help companies with inside sales, obviously CRM, um, and then we also do some technical engagements, right? If you have a small or don't have an IT department, right? We can help folks with you know, teams and servers and all kinds of stuff. So if you have any of those needs, we're, we're here. My focus is on the, the CRM side, but, but we have a big group that knows all this stuff. Hey, hey, Steve. Um, yeah. But before, yeah. Before, before we sign off, um, I think it'd be advantageous uh, just for everybody if you could go back into CRM and just show them again uh, in in workplace where all the training videos are. That that they're a resource there. Um, I, I think it's always a good top of mind reminder. So if somebody 
in your organization says, boy, how do I do this? Um, you know, there's so many videos that Steve's put together over, over time. Yeah, thank you so much. Cause I actually had that buried in a little scribble on the side that I should show them the videos, but I think I just, I mentioned them, but didn't show them. So I'm actually gonna do uh, two things here then. I'm gonna show you the videos. So right in this same workplace area, just a little bit below the dashboards are videos. And when you go in here, on mine, it shows up in the upper right. I'm assuming it's gonna be like for everybody. There's this these little bitty line that's just a playlist that Chad manages. So thank you, Chad, for that. And when I click that, it's gonna give me a list of all these videos. So some of you folks who said they were struggling with navigation, now that you know how to get here, you could watch video 100, CRM navigation, kind of walks you through how this thing ticks, how you navigate around. Guess what? There's a, a, a video for Dashboard 97. Uh, it doesn't go in as in-depth as I just did, but it shows you how to run reports using Dashboard 97. If you're struggling with scheduling reports, Dashboard or uh, video 97S shows how to schedule reports. So, and there's videos on, I wanna say, just about every one of our features. And then every time we do an upgrade, I think we've, we've been keeping track of these since 2012, at least we put videos out here, but these are all the improvements we've made throughout the years. So if you missed, which has been a very popular uh, release, the October 22 release, which is a 20, 20 minute video, this is gonna show you all the new stuff that we added back in October. So if you missed that announcement, there's another video for you. So all kinds of cool videos. Um, then the other thing that I wanted to show you was not as near as popular, but there is a document library. And there's tons of documents out here. Hardly anybody looks at this, but the one that you might care to look at is, is this document 97. If you click on that, it's gonna download a little Word document you can pull open and it will kind of describe a little bit about Dashboard 97 and it will describe every single report and give you an example of each one. Let's see if this takes too long for me to open up because I know it's huge with all the screenshots on it. Um, I'll see if that opens up before I wrap up But that. Yeah, here it is, let me just slide it over. So here's a document that needs to be updated because we're not LegView anymore. Um, but what this does is kind of explain Dashboard 97 but then it goes into every single report. That report 100, you know, what is it? What does it look like? Report 100B, what is it? What does it look like? You know, on and on and on. So there you go. So let's see, with that being said, I think, uh, find that true PowerPoint here again. It's right here. Oh, I think we're fine. Chad, I think. Yep. That, yeah, that got me to the last slide. So I think uh, that wraps up everything I wanted to cover. I'm glad we were able to answer questions. Sorry, we went 11 minutes over, but I'll let you kind of wrap things up. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. Hopefully everybody got some good value out of this. Uh, uh, we try to do these uh, every other month for our for our clients and uh, you know, looking for topics and uh, to support you with this. So again, if you have any questions at any time, our support staff, CRM support at ledupartners.com. Uh, is, is here to help you. Uh, it's included with your subscription. So make sure you take advantage of that. Uh, you know, get your questions answered and right away. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. Look for this recording in your inbox and share it with other users within your organization and uh, make it a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Chad.